And you're very welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast, and this is episode 83, and tonight we're going to be talking about the Irish Photography Podcast, Photographer of the Year 2019. I don't know who you are, but welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast. Sit back, relax, and listen about cameras, gear, settings, stories, and all things photography. Join Dermot and Darren on Ireland's Best Photography Podcast. Let's go. And you're very welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast. It's episode 83. We're talking about the Irish Photography Podcast, Photographer of the Year 2019. And I'm joined by two very special people this evening. First one is Dermot. He's always with me in County Limerick. Dermot, how are you getting on this evening, buddy? Since when do you call me special, man? Does, are you feeling okay? Like, normally you're giving me an awful <laughs> time when you're saying I'm special. I don't know. Well, let me put it this way to you, right? Every day I get to spend not, not meeting up with you is special. So talking to you kind of makes it... <laughs> And it's similar, doesn't it? <laughs> fair play, fair play. No, I'm having a great week. I'm really excited about what's in store for us during the week. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to get to the Dolomites, man. Excited, big time. Yeah, yeah, really, really excited, really excited. And, you know, we said we'd record this episode before we go because we had a fantastic competition on the group on Facebook, but also just in total. And we had a lot of entries from all around the world. And this evening we wanted to have a chat about it and we got... A third of the guests that we would have had on, or a third of the, the judges, sorry, that we would have had on, but also a previous guest of the podcast. And we're delighted to be joined this evening by Mr. Michael O'Sullivan. Michael, how are you, man? I'm all right, Kate. I'd love it. I'm all right, Kate. I'm okay, Darren. How are you keeping? <laughs> Del- <laughs> delighted to be on again. <laughs> Good stuff, yeah. At least this time, anyway, hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Unfortunately, we had the bad audio the last time, but sure, that was, we were only learning. We're only starting off, really, yeah? Ah, but come here. I should have known better. It was a bit of a rookie mistake. Uh... That's what you do when you when you try to have a conversation over a long distance commute, you know. So this is true. This is true. This is true. So, Michael, thanks very much for coming on this evening, and also thanks very much for being part of the contest that we had uh, to celebrate, I suppose, really the Irish Photography and Irish Photography Podcast. I hope you enjoyed being part of it first and foremost. Did you? It was brilliant. Absolute pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me involved. No, oh, thanks very much. And dear, would you enjoyed it too? Anyway, immensely with all the conversations we had about it. Yeah, I I was blown away by the sheer talent of some of the photographs in the competition, I, especially for our first year. I didn't expect a huge, uh, massive kind of load of entries and we were bombarded with the amount of photographs that were entered into. So I actually found it longer than I thought it was going to be. So after a while, I kind of got tired of looking at images. So what I did is I walked away, took a break for half an hour, and then I came back and then I started going again you know but then once I'd finished judging all the pictures that I was happy with uh, well I had a, I looked at them all uh, but I went back and started again just to make sure that I give every image a fair chance and like I said I was blown away by some of the talent that we have here in this little country of ours it's just it's immense man it's, I can't get over it yeah, I fully agree with you. And, you know, I was wondering how many entries we were going to have. And we had quite a lot of entries, as you said. But it wasn't the case that we were just scrolling through the entries and they were like, OK, blah, blah, blah. They were absolutely phenomenal images to be looking at. And I'm really thankful to everybody that entered into the inaugural uh, contest anyway for 2019. And this evening, what I wanted to do really was to discuss amongst the three of us the top three images of the contest itself. And, you know, the things that we liked about the images or what drew us to the images and then obviously overall the image itself so I suppose if I start really with third place and maybe I'll go to you Michael first what do you what are your thoughts on that image third place was just a second here it's the uh, black and white the monochrome image with the hands am I, yes am Anthony I, am Lynch I yes right, yeah. so yeah look um I'm actually going to be the probably the person here tonight who uh, is going to be the worst at remembering the image names and things like that so i apologize in advance but i never get tired <laughs> of looking at images but sometimes the paperwork ain't me you know but um yes no i think it's a lovely image you know it's a lovely lovely image um one of the things that caught me about it look first off it's digital okay so we were all judging them on 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 in digital format pretty good screen yes. pretty good calibrated system so you can you can get a good idea of what the uh, you know the tonal range in a good monochrome image is, and this image has a fantastic range of tones from the the deepest blacks right up to you know the brightest greys and some of the nice, nice highlights on it. And one of the things that really got me about the image um, was 
People have a tendency in, in high contrast monochrome photography to either, you know, especially in an image like that where you've got the uh, more mature person's hands, for example, versus the child's hands. People have a tendency in Irish photography, I find it's probably more than in, in Irish photography, but people have a tendency to exaggerate the shadows in the detail on things like the lines and skin and shadows under veins and things like that. And it can often be mm -hmm. way overdone. But on this, I think the tones and the modeling were handled perfectly. I mean, just the, the, the three dimensionality of it is not lost. And sometimes when people go a little bit too far and all of the details have black shadows and all of the, 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 um, the highlights are very, very bright, bright white, you lose the overall shape, you know? The overall roundness in mm -hmm. the hands and I think the shadows are handled marvelously in that image the other thing as well that's pretty cool is the symmetry between the the baby's fingers you know uh, versus yes. on the left versus right on the thumb that's things like that are a challenge to get right um especially when you consider where the camera is coming from you know so yes. you have a lot to think about in an image like that and I think the, the that the symmetry the composition the balance and the overall tonality is uh, cracking so it jumped out at me for, for those reasons. They're the kind of thing that the general public, general Joe Soap looking at an image would often just completely miss. But they're all big challenges that need to be handled, pardon the pun. So. Yeah, yeah, pardon the pun. But I fully agree with you. You know, it was very similar for me, actually, with that image. I found that when I first looked at it, everything seemed perfectly placed. You know, the composition of it, the fingers on the thumbs and everything else. The... Treat, the treatment of it was fantastic as well, because as you quite rightly said, I mean, you know, you look at that, it's very appealing to the eye. But what it got me most was the concept, but the storytelling that was within that image. And just one simple image, you can see that there's a connection there. You know that it's going to be a granddad, you know it's going to be, you know, a grandchild. And to have the two of them together, I think, is a fantastic image, not only for the photographer to take, but also the, those people who have those hands, do you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And look, to be fair, in, in family type photography like that, there, there, there aren't many concepts that we haven't already seen. So the challenge mm -hmm. is to do them as well as or better than other people have done them. And this is a very good example of, of where it's been done to a very high standard. So it's an excellent image. I mean, you could dissect it all night, you know, but it's an excellent image. Yeah. Yes. Now, and how about you, Dermot? What did you uh, like about it? I, I fell in love with this image from the moment I opened the, the email, right? But... Truth be known, this didn't score my top three. Now, it's very hard to judge this competition. And like having that, a caliber of image like that coming in, not even in top three, just says a lot for the competition. And so, especially when, you, get, loved, especially when you were saying you get tired of looking at images. You know? Yeah, exactly. I can, I, can see, I, I can see that being the headline all over the internet tomorrow. Irish photography podcast, sick of looking at images. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I loved about this image? Like You say it's a granddad, okay? But I think it's a hard-working dad. You can see the craft and uh, in, in his fingernails yes. and, and the skin. You know, he bite, maybe bites his fingernails. And it's, it's, it's attention to detail and how crisp, how clean, how sharp that image is. And then you see the veins on the left hand side of the hand and it's kind of l drawing you in as kind of a leading line bring you back up towards the two thumbs I to, like it, it tells a story in an image and you can always say a picture tells a thousand words and god damn it this picture really does do it for me i absolutely love it and to you anthony lynch anthony lynch i fair play to you man you put in a stellar image and look it, like i said it didn't get in my top three but why it's still a beautiful image. I love it. I'd be I'd be so proud of it if I actually own this image myself. Dermot, would you agree that the um the like anything in the top ten, we'd have all been pretty much happy with what went in. The standard oh, was really high. The I top agree. ten and up were cracking, like, you know? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. To, could I mean, obviously, agree obviously with the top more. the top three, you look back at them when we see the final uh, the, the scores, the way they tallied, and when when these images were, you know, when they came to the top and you see them together. You kind of see, you know, mm -hmm. you're kind of like, yeah, it's like when you judge a salon, it's the same thing. You know, you, you, you see so many images and there are always a certain amount that stick in your head. And there's always that difficulty of separating the very top ones. And I think we had a similar situation in this case. But when you see them together at the end, it's like, yeah, yeah, cream rises to the top. 
I fully agree with you. And you know what? It's uh, You say about the top 10 there, we ended up with the top three, and this image is in number three. Yeah. I mean, it was so close amongst all the images. It was incredible. Yeah. And as you say, how the scoring would have panned out from it. And like you, Dermot, when I first looked at the emails and saw this image come true, I was like, wow, Jeannie, this is beautiful. I saw a lot of images, obviously, from all the entries, and it's interesting how the voting would come true because, as you say, Dermot, it didn't end up in your top three, but still... You know, it still resonated with you. So that'll tell you how, you know, I suppose, good the other calibre of images as well mm-hmm. overall as a an entry for an inaugural contest were actually so strong. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for year two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, moving on then, I suppose, really to number two and the image that finished up in second place. So, Dermot, I'll go to you first on this one. What's your thoughts in regards to it and what did you like about that image? Yeah, I have it open here now on the iPad, and it's got a lot going for it. It's got uh, such a high contrasting image. It's got starburst. It's got leading lines. It's got a story inside it. And it's just it's got symmetry. It's got patterns. It's got very rich blacks, and it's not overcooked uh, either. Like the the light bulbs, they obviously have to be kind of that much brighter. But you look at the railings on the right hand mm-hmm. side and left hand side, they are just perfect and i love the fact that he shot it a shallow depth of field as well so normally when you're shooting a landscape or some image like this we're always kind of looking for pin sharp images from the front the whole way to the back and i think this isn't done Mm -hmm. enough and i think more of us should actually try this style of photography in the landscape in other that besides portrait because in portraiture we're always shooting at 1.2 or 1.4 whatever we can get whatever at the lowest aperture is we're going to shoot in portraiture but in this image, it's shot as, I'm guessing, uh, a very uh, fast lens. And it I just love it. I think it's really, really good. And like I said, the symmetry and the patterns in it are just superb. I, I would agree with you. And it's actually, you can hit the nail on the head as well also with the things that jumped out to me. Because the blacks are black. And that's a big thing, right? Because you want to have the moodiness of the image. And when you look at that it is a moody image and you do kind of want to step onto that bridge and walk across the bridge either out of fear knowing what's on the other side or out of curiosity and I think with the shadows and the light and even on the steps as it comes up from the front you see the touches of light that are coming down onto that it's handled really really nice and it does really take you all the way through to the top to the starburst as you say it's a call a starburst when it's a light it's a yeah, sunburst it's, when yeah. it's the sun it's, I call yeah, it a starburst it's a, whatever the, yeah it's a, star, it's a starburst effect you know, mm, yeah. um, which, which tends to often, and I could be wrong here, right? And I never make assumptions when looking at an image, right? But I could be wrong, but that normally means you're stopped down a little bit. Because yes. you're right. wide open. That's what you, I was thinking. Yeah, right. wide open, you'll get a haze, yeah. or stopped yeah. down, you'll get a bit of a starburst. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe you did a small bit of editing in the foreground, uh, kind of a, a graduated filter and reduced the clarity, maybe. I don't, oh, know. I don't know what he did, but, uh, but I have to say it's technically incredibly well handled. Mm. I yeah. agree with everything yeah. you it said. It really works. Yeah. Like, there's one thing seeing an image, right? And there's nothing more frustrating when you're judging a competition um, than seeing images that were so well seen. Because one of, the, one of the biggest challenges in photography is developing that eye to be able to see the potential in an image, whether it's in a scene or something you're setting up or a story or whatever. But then to be able to, like, what separates most of the images out is to be able to see the image but then to have the technical chops to be able to actually uh, execute it. And this is an e- extremely well-seen image. The potential was seen for that, you know, the handle of the minimal areas of light falling off into lots of shadow. The potential was seen, but the, the photographer, to be fair, handled it technically exceptionally well as well. So the execution is spot on. And those little, dim- those little ripples of light on the step tops that you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're cracking. They just have a... It's almost look. like it's in, in a V-shape or something coming down yeah if you can see that it's just yeah, class it, it is and you know when i saw it i was thinking should that be perfect for a movie poster there you go i was just going to say it's like something it's like the intro to a film noir you know yes alice in wonderland yeah, <laughs> that's a strange a, alice in wonderland I, I was, <laughs> yeah don't know why I, I was thinking more arse i was thinking more arse and wells but no you mentioned it i can see the alice in wonderland <laughs> yeah i was i was thinking more exorcist yeah, it's, it reminds you of The Exorcist as well, wouldn't it? You know, the, but yeah. then again, I, th- I, I think to be fair, we're kind of reading into stuff for the poor uh, author here, but yeah, look, it has so many applications <laughs> to an image like that. It's commercially good. It's artistically good. It's a cracking image. Great shot. It jumped out at me on first browse through the, um, the full selection. It's one of the ones that jumped out at me as being 
you know, for sure mm. one of the strongest images. And Dermot, you mentioned there in regards to how he took the photograph, right? So mm -hmm. you've been across the Haypenny Bridge in Dublin, I imagine. The one thing that about it is that there's a lot of people and there's always a lot of people. And it's the link across the river to Temple Bar. So you still have even more people. So to take that <laughs> photograph, you either have to be very lucky that there's nobody there or be there at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday because every other night there's going to be people walking across that from a tourism point of view. So to be able to take that shot or did he have an ultra long exposure and then the people that are walking across were no longer there. I mean, it's very interesting to see how he would have taken that photograph. And I don't want to dwell into the actual details, but actually how if somebody wanted to, be able to re recreate that image, there's a technical aspect to be able to do that and to do it so well as I mean, there's no noise. No, no, there, there is none whatsoever. It's like, a, it's, it's very well taken. Technically, it's perfect from every angle. I can't see a fault with the image. It's, it's, it's just superb. And you are right. He could have used a very long exposure to get that, uh, that uh, blurry effect. So if someone was walking over, then they would disappear. And and like mm -hmm. Michael correctly said, then to get the starburst, you are have to going to stop down to f sixteen, or even lower than yeah. that again. You know, uh, like depending on the lens and as well, some lenses don't produce good starbursts as well, like like uh, the Sigma R35 1.4, terrible. The Sigma R20 mil uh, is terrible, but the 12 to 24 is unbelievable. You only have to go to like F10, F11, you get a starburst straight away. The Canon 16 to 35, you can shoot at F8 and you get a starburst with that lens, which is yeah, superb. From F8 yeah, from yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it all depends on the lens then as well. So, like, you could, with that lens, let's say the Canon 1635, stop it down to F16. And at night time, you could use an ISO 50. So your exposure could be uh, four or five minutes long for all, all you care. Like, it depends on how much light is in the scene then as well. So if there were hundreds of people walking by, they're not going to turn up an image. Yeah, absolutely. And I fully agree with you. And like I said, I think it's a phenomenal image and it definitely deserves being into um, second place. So, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a very quick break and we'll come back and discuss in detail the winning image of the Irish Photography Podcast, Photographer of the Year 2019. Are you tired of running out of power at that crucial moment? Do you need to charge two batteries simultaneously or charge on the go while in your car? The award-winning Pro Cube 2 from Hadel has got you covered. Available for Canon, Nikon, Sony and Panasonic. Visit Hanel.ie. And you're very welcome back to the Irish Photography Podcast. And now we're going to discuss the winning image. And Michael, I suppose, you know, you've seen a lot of images over the years in all the contests that you would have, you know, judged on and adjudicated on and so forth like that. This image, when I first saw it, it jumped at me off the page, off the screen because of the way that the image overall came together. Did it do similar to you? Rather than we go into the details, just as a general thing, first of all, when you're first viewing it, did it did it jump to you or did it was it a slow burner? Uh, no, it jumped. It jumped immediately. It yeah. didn't it didn't it didn't um immediately kind of illuminate itself, pardon the pun. It didn't illuminate itself in my head as necessarily being in the top three when I went through on the first pass. Yes. But then by the time I was on second or third pass, the thing was embedded in my head. Yes. Yeah. Dear me, what about you? Uh, yeah, it jumped out at me absolutely straight away when I first saw it. It's the color contrast that really kind of popped for me. So you have all these kind of muted tones that are kind of blue and kind of falling away into the image. That they're they're not really popping, but all of a sudden you have just orange, bold, vibrant, vivid leaf that's just in the shape of a Canadian flag. <laughs> Dare I say it? And the winner, lo and behold, is actually freaking canadian man it's it, it, this image was it's almost like it was meant to be i just i can't get over it it's just and even like you've all the leading lines then as well coming from the stem of the leaf and then the other leaves are kind of helping you guide it into the middle and it's yes. framed very very well nicely as well so and the, t the funny thing about this image is it looks so well in a portrait style image yet if you flipped it into a landscape orientation it's going to look just as good because I actually did it just turned my iPad like that and I was like man this is so cool no matter what way you put the fucking image I actually love it rotated 90 degrees clockwise but yeah yeah <laughs> Saying, saying yeah. nothing, yeah. It, it works this way too. I'm just saying nothing. <laughs> it does. You and, said and everything. Isn't <laughs> but isn't that the sign of a great image? 
that if it'll work in two orientations, it's not just going to be limited to, to the one. Do you know what I mean? And I, I agree with what no you said there. I think it's probably a good sign, but I, know, I don't know if it's the sign of a good image, but uh, I'll give you that one. I'll leave you having yeah, that Yeah, it's a good there. sign. Yeah. I mean, of course, yeah. But I mean, you know, Dermot, you mentioned there about the orange leaf and what jumped out at you. I mean, was it the leaf or was it the fact that it was orange? Uh, <laughs> okay, Michael, you might know, but the whole country should know at this stage. My favourite colour is orange. I mean, I have an okay. infatuation with it. My leaf blower is orange. My running shoes are orange. My van is orange. The majority of my clothes are orange, bar this Nike jumper hoodie uh my hair can be orange at times you know so i just, I just love the color orange man it's just the greatest thing ever invented so yeah but look going back to the image we got we, we kind of got sidetracked there it's just <laughs> it's just unbelievable I, I just fell in love with it and i was it's funny because a friend of mine and i'm disappointed in david woodland yeah david you you were harping on about entering the competition that you couldn't wait for it. And the feckin' Egypt didn't even put in a photograph. And do you know what his excuse was? Hmm. I was too busy. Too busy, my hmm. arse. But, like, he said to me, ah, look, there's, like, three landscape photographers. Uh, landscape uh, landscape images are just going to kill it. And the funny thing about it, not a single landscape image came in in the top three. Yeah, it's quite interesting as well when you think about the overall mix of images that we would have had and that image itself to rise to the top, you know, to be the cream of the bunch. When we looked at it yeah. overall and we're scoring the image, you mentioned a number of things there. But for me, first and foremost, is it's a chaotic scene, but it's very simple. And the treatment of it is excellent. You know, I mean, it's very clean. Like normally in a piece of water, you might have other debris floating around. Did he clean it up? If he did, great. But at least it it doesn't there's no distractions. I mean, and the leading lines in it bring you where you want to see. And I just think overall, it's a very compelling image because it's not a landscape image as you said it's part of the landscape it's a leaf that's simply placed but all the leaves around it actually complement that leaf as well even more so for me can i jump in yeah 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 no um no, one no. Of, <laughs> okay i go home sorry <laughs> the, um, oh no wait i am home the um there's a couple of things there's a couple of points on that right there are some very interesting and important things just mentioned there if you look at the full selection, there are quite a few landscapes in there. There are quite a few, mm -hmm. pretty much a lot of different types of photography. Most genres of photography are represented, okay? One of the things that you'll find, um, now we had a bit more time than say, if you're judging a salon, okay? If you're yes. judging a salon, you're talking, you gotta be fairly alert and you're, you're, you're seeing thousands of images come up in a day, right? You're, you're judging through, you know, it's a case of, we need to get 2000 images done before coffee break kind of thing in the morning, you know? So, when you're judging salons, you, you get used to seeing things, spotting things really quickly. In this situation, we had a bit more time, so we could consider the images a little bit more. And something that was a slow grower probably had more of a chance in, say, a competition like this than mm. in, say, a salon, right, where things need to have immediate impact. But this image was very different to everything else that was in there. Okay, so one of Agreed. the things that you'll often find in, in, in competitions are that, look, a good image, you could have a lot of good images, but something that jumps out because it's very different. There were a lot of landscapes in the, the competition, like I said, a lot of portraits, a lot of different types of, of um, image, but this one is kind of unusual. It's the only intimate landscape, if you want to call it that, or the only mm. you know, yeah. detailed yeah. landscape shot like that. And even though there are certain things that kind of were very risky with this, everything about this, this shot is risky to put into a competition, right? It's fairly simple compositionally, fairly simple technically on the face of it, okay? So often you get, people would be thinking to themselves, oh, it's not something that's really going to impress. I'm going to put in my most technically impressive shot or my most, you know, bombastic, epic um, landscape, my most dramatic shot, my most whatever, okay? But a shot like this, the composition's really simple. The setup, the scene is really simple. Um, technically, you could underestimate it and say technically it's very, very simple, but it's, there's more to it than, than people would often give credit, and I'll, I'll say why in a second. But the way the colors are handled, right, you have such a, a contrast between the orange leaf and all of the other colors in the, in the background. That's even risky because you're talking a very fine line between handling colors that way and getting it nicely right and going way too far. Okay? And yeah. having an image look so unnatural that it, it, it just kind of grates on the judges as being overly contrived. So this image is, 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 
stood out for a number of reasons. One is because it is different to everything else in there. And secondly, because all of those challenges, you know, that the things that were risky were handled pretty well. You know, the other thing as well is you're talking, you mentioned it's a chaotic scene with all the leaves and the stems kind of going all different directions and whatever. If you take a look at it though, with the exception of the, the stem at the very top, they all seem to frame around that central leaf. They do. And, uh, they do. and they're very, they do. They're very uh, lucky or convenient or well set up. I don't care which it is because at the end of the day, we judge the picture and <laughs> not the, not the, um, the exactly. effort. But they're very convenient. The way the colors are layered from the most rotten leaves up to the ones with a little more yeah. color, so you have more blue, more green, and then up to the orange with the the, uh, the very bright orange veins and stem on, or pink kind of veins and stem on it. So look, there's 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 um, many reasons why this image would then have stood out. And an image that stands out in a competition, as long as it stands out for the right reasons, will always, always at least end up in the shortlist. So I, I just wanted to make that point about this one. It had so many reasons yeah. why it would stand out. Yeah, I I yeah, like I Darren, sorry to cut across it there, but like you say, it's a chaotic scene. I think it's a scene that works in harmony with everything, and and and, and isn't that funny how two judges can see one image in a total different way? Whereas, like you said, like there's a lot of things going on, it, whereas I can see everything just everything fitting into one another, absolutely perfectly. Isn't that mad? Yeah. I think that's, see, that's part of the job of a photographer. The, you know, he took order out of chaos, you know? And it took a yeah. scene that would have been chaotic. And I don't think Darren meant the image was chaotic. And maybe you did. I no, I didn't. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. Yeah. No, I yeah. meant the exactly. scene. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the scene is something that's a natural scene. And nature is chaos. No, it looks on the face of it like a natural scene. Okay. It could be set up. I don't know. But the point is, nature and, and a scene like this is chaotic. And the photographer distilled the order out of it into a picture which has lots of order in it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And you're absolutely right, Mike. And I know I didn't say the image was chaotic. I yeah. said the scene is chaotic. And he's, it's cohesively put together because everything complements mm -hmm. everything within the image. And you know, the thing also is whether or not the image was put together to spot it in the first place, yeah. to know that the, the actual ingredients of a very good image are there, and not only having the ingredients, but putting them together, that they work. And that not only does it work for one image, it worked for me. It worked for all of us yeah. because we all have got positive things to say in regards to the image. It also worked for the f photographer who took the image because he had said it was his favorite <laughs> image of the year that he'd taken so far. And yeah. I think quite rightly so, because it, it is a beautiful image. You can just imagine that image being reused or, you know, resold or printed or even being used for a number of different reasons. Because yeah. it is, as you say, Dermot, it's a maple leaf. The maple leaf is the emblem of Canada. Mm. He's from Canada. So it is perfect that everything kind of falls in, into place for a beautiful image. Well done to Sebastian, man. I mean, hands down, that is such a worthy winner for the first year of the competition, man. Here, here. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, it was a lot of fun to be able to see all the entries as we got them through. Um, you know, I think... I was really impressed with the quality and I was really impressed with the, the, the different aspects of photography that we saw as well. You know, there's a number of images within that that didn't make it into the top 10. It doesn't mean that they weren't a very good image because what I did like is that you know, there was the four of us that were judging on it. We all, all of our combined scores gave us the results and we all agreed, I suppose, almost technically speaking, amongst the same images being on the top three. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you know, one funny thing, Darren, and uh, we all kind of like, all ju all four judges were kind of in the same mindset, okay? But the general public, the the listeners, the people who chime in every week, and thank you very much for listening to the podcast every week. If you look at the pictures on Facebook and the amount of likes that they received, okay? Here's yes. a... Here's a spin turner for your head now. The photograph that came in first place in the competition received the least amount of likes on Facebook. Uh, out of the top three mm -hmm. notices. The photograph that came in second place got the second most likes on Facebook. And the photograph that came in third place got the most likes on Facebook. That wasn't that a bit of a... When you, when you say on Facebook, you mean in the podcast page? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just on or the you Facebook mean, or do you mean uh, group page. Or do you mean page. in general on Facebook? You mean in the on the no podcast no no group. just that okay. on the podcast group Darren posts up the winners say uh, third place for uh, third place second place first place and you know people can go in individ individually and like that picture and thirty seven likes for third place twenty two likes for second place and seventeen likes for first place I just thought that was ironic 
Uh, you know what? It kind of illustrates a point, and people are often surprised by this. Photography competitions are generally not a democracy, you know? <laughs> and, and, there, and there are many reasons for that. But at the end of the day, it's always good to see what, um, what has mass appeal. And I guess mm. when, you, when you put it out to the whole photographic community, you get an idea of what has mass appeal, um, as opposed to what if you, if you single down and distill down a, a competition and being only judged by the, the observation and the opinions of four judges. There's also an element of, we're not necessarily trying to pick our favorite pictures and the pictures we might like the most in the world and the pictures that I might hang in my house, but we're trying to pick, um, we're trying to juggle a lot of values in judging an image and trying to take some of the subjectivity out of it as well. So it's always good to see, you know, the disparity sometimes between what wins the competition and what might necessarily have mass appeal in the photographic community. So I think that was a great point to raise, Darren, or was it Dermot or Dermot you said it? So. Yeah, that's me, Dermot. of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Best name in the world. I, I know it's unusual for him to raise a great point, like, but he does it every so often. It's okay, <laughs> you know. What a shite I have to put up with on this <laughs> podcast. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I suppose look you know overall like I say you know it was a fantastic contest yeah. and I suppose thanks very much to not only people who enter but just without them we wouldn't have any images to be able to look at and you know and enjoy but also for Michael for coming on board for helping us with the judging for Bernard for coming on board helping us with the judging and then to our sponsors who were great to be able to give us some fantastic prizes and you know for us to do the inaugural contest and to have such a great plethora of prizes for the winners um, can only really you know fill me with confidence in how it's going to go for 2020 as well so now we have the task of making sure that we get all the prizes out to the worthy winners and you know I'm as you alluded to last week on the podcast, here, but I'm working on putting together a, a video showreel of the images like mm. I would have done before in the past for Monster Landscape Photographers. I'm going to do one as well for here. So if I can get it done, um, I'll pop it on the end of this podcast because we're not only just recording this podcast, we're uh, videoing this podcast as well. So I'll put it on to the end of this as well so people will be able to see all of the images that were entered in the contest and the different caliber, as we said from the outset, guys. You know, it was phenomenal overall to look at the caliber of images that we got through and you know when we put it into the showreel then people can watch all of that as well and see the hard task that we did have to be fair to pick out amongst all those entries and come up with our top three mm -hmm. yeah there were some i'm just looking back over the full selection there while we were talking there are some cracking images in there i don't want to mention any of them but you know there are images in here that i'd love to you know at some hold on a second it's so well my done to the author you know? Michael, so if you had an option to choose your favourite photograph out of all, I think there's 80 or 90 images uh, submitted for the competition, if you'd one image, just off the top of your head now, I, I, know, I know it's hard to think of them all, which I, I, one I tell, I jumped tell you what, out not at you? To say, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say one that would be my image of the competition because we have a top three that we agree on, so those are our images. Yeah. Like Even for me, I don't dispute a single image in that top three, but there are other images that if you wanted to... You know that you could mention as as another. You know how could you put it? Honorary like, mention or whatever. I yeah. pick out. There's there's a really cool one. I think it's Killarney, Is it? Uh, there's a a shot with the uh, little boat on the frost by the lake on the long grass. Who, who's mm, is that yes. image again, guys? Can you remember? I don't have the titles and names in front of me. But uh, I think it's Goran's. I think I'm not quite sure. Yeah, with lovely reflections in the lake and and stairs and yes. the sky, stuff like that. You know, there's there's one. Another one, which is a fairly crazy shot, was one with it's either the Milky Way or the Orion Arm, whichever. Not so sure, but um, it's got a, a a blast of stars, a splash of stars across the sky. It's got some stuff going on, what looks like in a village around a little chapel. And, oh, that's Gavin um, it, It's got a very bright. It's got a very bright light on the right hand side, and there's also light coming from the front on the on the uh, the flowers, right? It's the kind yeah, of image you're yeah. thinking shouldn't work, but it's so crazy and colourful yeah. and, and, <laughs> yeah. and aesthetically well put together, if you could even argue about it as much as you like technically and, yeah. and realistically. And I remember Gabriel O'Shaughnessy made a comment one time and said, you know, people who argue about things only being real should only watch the news or something to that effect, you know. <laughs> um, although how much, how much of that is real, but anyway. Yeah, but I'd, yeah, I'd agree yeah. with that. Sometimes images are just totally creative and... You know, even though you wouldn't see that blast of stairs over that scene that looks like an evening scene, it's still a fairly cracking picture, yeah. you know, pictorially yeah. and aesthetically point of view. There's a lovely, um, the shot of the cliffs 
with it looks like it's either between rain showers or after rain showers mm. before it whatever and yes. if i can see that is it, is it Stephen Stephen Durbin or Dunbar Stephen Dunbar was the author right, um, okay. i think so that's a lovely classic landscape you know so that was mm. actually up there in one of my ones in the top 5 fighting for ending up in my top 3 as well so for the landscape guys out there you weren't overlooked um, but yeah so look i, I if, if i had my way dear mid i i you know, I'd obviously yeah. mention a few images like that, but yeah. no, not for, mm -hmm. I wouldn't dispute the top three. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, you say there about the, the landscape point of view, and all I ever do, and I keep talking about in the podcast, is I'm a landscape photographer. That's it. I'm a one-trick pony. And you'd imagine that I would be attracted to the landscape more so on these images. And there's one image that really, really jumped off the screen to me, and I think it's an image of the Mad Hatter. Um, yeah. And... It, just the way the image was taken, the vibrancy of the colours, the sharpness of the image, the character itself was really intriguing. And I kind of wanted to know more about the character. And that image to me really struck me because I'm not normally looking at portraiture or street photography. But I just think the way that whole image was handled was very, very, very well done. And it I was nicely, image, nicely spotted. Mm. Yes, it was lovely. And Dermot, I suppose from your point of view, what image then jumped out to you? Uh, that Cliff Samoher one was absolutely gorgeous. I fell in love with it. But the one image that kind of really kind of resonated with me from, and it was the very first image that I actually opened. Sorry, no, I can't remember his name, but it was the Volkswagen Golf parked on the side of the road with this. M now, yes. this very very creative photograph with this menacing orange sky. Hey, it's orange. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just unbelievable. A tip, a tip for anybody entering for the 2020 contest <laughs> is just put the orange in your image and if Dermot is, is judging again, you're away. Yeah. <laughs> but I just but thought it was very you, creative. You, you, you're near, go ahead, sorry, sorry Dermot. No, no, I, I just thought it was very creative and it was very sharp, nice, nice car. Uh, it's just... It's just, and there's so many layers to the image then as well. So you're kind of building it up as you go along. So I just, and again, it was different from uh, a lot of the stuff. So I was bucking the trend. So you're looking at uh, landscape images, you're looking at portraits. So like you, you get the leaf one, totally different. You get this one, it's uh, totally different as well. So the Volkswagen one actually did score very high for me. It was in my top three. So yeah, I just, I thought it was a great image. I loved it. You'd nearly feel bad mentioning a few of them, wouldn't you? Because I'm looking back over them again here and there's another dozen I'd love to mention. <laughs> <laughs> from a, I give it, just, can I just say one other thing? Just from the point of view of, from two completely different ends of photography, right? There's the one of the bow on the, on the white sand with the long exposure on the water yeah. and the, the blurry effect and stuff like that. Very simple, very nice. Even the streaks in the sky that one of them, you're wondering, is it a bit of flare or is it uh, an airplane trail? But it all works. All those things all work really well. And that was a really nice image from a very, um, you know, what's the word? I almost use the word mainstream landscape point of view. But there's another shot there. It's the wedding shot. Yes. This shot the with bird, the couple releasing the dove. the dove. And I think what's perfect yeah. about that, I think what's perfect about that is it's like one of those images that you're not going to give the bride and groom probably. Um, because <laughs> yes. the timing of it is probably just before yeah. the shot that they would like. But... Yeah. Just the reaction, the reaction and the moment that's captured there from an actual recording, the actual event point of view, I think that's pretty classic as well. So there's other reasons mm. that things would be good, good photos. You know, there are other criteria and values that make up a good photograph as well. It's not just about the beautiful picture or the technically amazing picture or the, you know, really impressive composition. Sometimes little moments like that are, are pretty strong as well. So well done to the author on that one too. Mm. Yeah, and I think, you know what, you kind of summed it up there too with the hard job that we had to be able to pick out because there's phenomenal images there. You know, we were lucky, as you said, we had time to look over them as opposed to doing a quick flash look over them. So we're really able to go through them. But even now when you look at them back again, and, you know, I know... I. I know when I start to put that showreel together, I'd be looking at all these images even further, even more so, and going, wow, man, it's incredible. So it was a really tough job. And, you know, Michael, again, I suppose I'd like to thank you for your assistance uh, in the judging, I suppose, really, overall. And again, for coming on this evening to discuss these awesome three images. And, you know, congratulations to Sebastian for um, winning the contest. And moreover, thanks to everybody and congratulations too to yourselves because, Dermot, you know, we've been doing it through the year about going through and hitting that B button in Lightroom for mm -hmm. the banger <clears throat> and to find the right images to be able to bring it down to the number one image that people wanted to 
uh, submit. So I'm delighted to see the quality of the images that we got from people hopefully using that method throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a great kind of exercise for uh, ourselves as photographers because I and I'm, I I've done my bee keys throughout the whole year and I've been up the walls now at work the whole way through December and just trying to get images out to brides in January. So. I have them selected. I just need to fine tune them and actually select my own top 10 from that method in Lightroom. And I thought it's, like I said, a very, very good exercise for every photographer to use for themselves because you're grading yourself and you're not emotionally attached to every image when you first come home. At least you can look at this kind of broad spectrum of your photographs throughout the year and you can analyze them and you can see what you liked. You can see where you're going right and you can see where you're going wrong. And you have all that metadata then as well in front of you to even further analyze your images also. So I think it's definitely a two that we should start straight away in the year 2020. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So look, that's the uh, end of tonight's episode. Again, you know, thanks very much for you guys, I suppose, sharing your thoughts in regards to it. You know, we were blown away from it. And uh, Michael, from my point of view, thanks for coming on again. And for me anyway, it's Shlanga Fall. Hey, yo. Darren, Darren, Dermot, absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks a million for having me on. Hey, guys. If you dig what you're hearing, why don't you jump over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a five-star rating, and don't forget to share with your friends. With all that done, we'll see you next week. And remember, keep shooting.